Today I want to leave a thought with you that we will carry through the year. Progressing through obedience. If you want to make progress with God, it's going to take obedience. This is a beautiful time of the year. It really is. It's a beautiful time that God has given us as we come to the end of a year and get ready to go into another year. This part of the yearly journey is just about coming to an end. What are we going to do next year? I've made some, already made some plans. I got my thoughts together on some things. I'm planning now. The Bible says planning belongs to man, but God directs the steps. You make the plan and God will direct you. 2020, 2020, I don't have a fancy saying for that, but that will be our theme for the year. We're going to progress through what now? Obedience. We're going to progress in every phase of our lives, spiritually, emotionally, socially, financially, whatever it is. We're going to make progress because we're going to obey the Word of God. And we're going to find today that God had given some instructions to the children of Israel just before they went into the promised land, and he told them how they were to prosper. And that's amazing. Now, it wasn't easy for Moses to go down to Egypt and speak to Pharaoh. It, 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 was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because, number one, he didn't have what it ordinarily took to stand before the number one man in the country, Pharaoh, the number one man in Egypt, the most powerful man in Egypt, who was a world power at that time. And God sent a, a man there who was, we say, unlearned, he was not diplomatic. He knew nothing about diplomacy. He knew, he knew nothing about that. All he knew was what God told him. Just go tell this to Pharaoh. And it's not easy when you are walking by faith, having not seen where you're going, but by faith you believe God is with you and you follow the leader as he goes into what we would call Never Never Land. I don't know if this is real. I don't know what Moses is doing. I don't know how he come up with this idea. But we'd much rather stay here. Now, now, mind you, this is human thinking. This is the way humans think. For over 400 years, every day, the same thing. They knew when they woke up, they didn't have dream of another place. They knew they were going to go out and break bricks or work in the field. Uh, they were going to do something. They were slaves all these years, and every night they went to bed, they only woke up with the drudgery of the next day on their mind. There were no dreaming in Egypt. Dreaming about what? Dreaming to go where? You're here. You're stuck here. You've been here 400 years. 400 years. Why would God wait that long? 400 years. They were used to the routine. And when you're used to the routine, it's very difficult for a man or even a woman to come along and say, I got a vision. Now, people say, oh, yeah, right. I got a vision. The Scripture specifically states, we walk by faith, not by sight. I have a vision. I have somewhere to go. I see something. Wow. Where you come from? Sure enough, they attacked Moses. Words, they attacked Moses. Nobody going to listen to you. And he went to God. He told God, these people are not listening to me. He says, anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. They have been depressed and mistreated. They don't even know how to think right. So what I want you to do, I want you to bring them out. Don't ask them what they think about it. Bring them out. Bring them out. So Moses, back and forth, back and forth after the plagues, they wind up out of Egypt. Everybody happy. Where are we going? Oh, down by the Dead Sea. You going to kill us. You brought us out here to kill us. We could have died in Egypt. No, God took them through the sea. And on the other side of the sea is when God began to let them know, I want you to be somebody special to me. 
I'm, I want you. I know you don't have anything, but you have something down the road. I promised it to your forefathers. What I'm doing today, I'm doing because of the promise I made to Abraham years and years ago. I read this scripture, and I read, this, read a couple of those scriptures about what God's doing today. And I reminded Pastor King, I said, you know that thing hit me like a ton of bricks. There's some things God is doing for me because of the promise he made to my mother. Amen. See, everybody here, now they're here on your own efforts now. Come on, you know, come on. God made a promise to your forefathers. Yeah. You know what he told some of the kings of Israel? He said, I'm doing this because of the promise I made to David. Right. I'm remembering this because of David, my servant. I, I can't lie to David. And who knows what God is doing today? He probably made a promise to the forefathers years and years ago. And what God wants us to do is come into agreement with it and fulfill what he promised. It's going to be fulfilled, so it might as well be us. It might as well be me. If you're going to bless the family, start with me. Don't have me debating. I don't know if God said that or not. He said, well, I'll do it to your son. I don't know. I'll give it to your grandson. It's not going to fall to the ground because I spoke it. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Nothing God spoke will fall to the ground, and I want to be a part of that generation that believed God and what he promised, every promise God made is yes and amen. What about the promise you made to the parents? I don't know. It's still yes. It's still there. So quit thinking that just what you know is what's going to happen. We don't know what kind of deal. God, all that praying my mother did, ain't no telling what God got in store for me. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's just really, it really opened my eyes to something. And I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want my, I want it. The people that walked with God and, and prayed to God, and they, they didn't have all the sophisticated stuff. We have lights and all of the equipment. They didn't have that. The pews didn't have backs on them. They were slats of wood, but they called out to God. And many things God doing today because of what they did in them old places that we wouldn't want to be found in. No heat, no AC, but people calling on the name of the Lord. And God's telling us today, what I'm doing for you is not because of you. It's because of a promise I made, and I can't lie. <laughs> now, I want you to look forward to 2020. There's some promises piled up. It's time for us to receive them. Amen. Amen. I wanted to do the, the offering first. I, I wanted to. But since I'm already here, <laughs> this is a relay, and I, I done left the starting block. If you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 29, we're going to start there. We're going to progress through obedience. Progressing through obedience. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 29 9. I don't know all the, the promises God made to Reverend Johnson, my dad. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know a lot of conversations they had, but no doubt if God sent him to Edenville, he, he promised us some things. And um, we got to make sure every last one of them is fulfilled. And I know when we were changing the name of the church from Mount Carmel to the Life Center, I went to him. I guess my background does not allow me to disrespect those over me. I, I can't. I don't know whether it was the whippings I got before I went to the military or the disciplines I was taught in the military. You don't disrespect authority. You, you, you don't do it. But I had enough in me to go to him and let him know what I was getting ready to do. I say, we want to change the name. And I told him why. And he told me, he said, I did what the Lord told me to do. 
You do what God tells you to do. You do it. I said, would you come preach the last sermon under the name Mount Carmel? He said, I'll be honored to. So I honored him. And God said he would honor me. Now, follow me to the end of the journey. Now, don't get off the ship now. We hadn't hit port yet, okay? We, we, we go through a little rocky storms. It was a clear day one day, and the next day you couldn't even go outside. It was a storm. And in life, people of God, God takes us based on something. You just isn't going for a walk. Things just isn't happening. It's based on something. And when the children of Israel had come out of the wilderness, they got outside there on the other side of the sea. They went a couple of days' journey to Mount Sinai. They got to Mount Sinai, probably longer than a couple of days. They got to Mount Sinai, and that's where they camped for about two years. They camped at Mount Sinai out of Egypt. At Mount Sinai, God began to talk to them about their future. He began to tell them what he was going to do. You go into a land, I promise, Abraham. You got to go there. Your forefathers have already got this promise. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, write down. The promise should have been passed on and on. But after 400 years in bondage, they had a little to look forward to. After 400 years, I'm quite sure anybody would think, that thing can't be alive now. 400 years? My God. 400 years. That's a long time. What is this, 2019? Subtract 400 years from that. And how much would that be? I'm waiting on you. 16 what? 1619. If God promised our forefathers something in 1619, and in 2019, he decides to fulfill it. <laughs> That's hard to believe. That's, that's, that's very difficult to believe. So you see why they weren't too in tune with God. But he brings them out. They get to Mount Sinai, and God begins to tell them some things. And listen at what God tells them in, 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 in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 29, verse 9. This is, this is just a, a beautiful passage of Scripture. Um, and I, not the only one, but it's the first one we're going to start with. Listen to what God told them in verse 9. So keep the words of this covenant to do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. Keep the words of this covenant that you may what? In all that you do. So their prospering was based on obeying a covenant. Let me start with that. The Bible is a covenant book. We call it the old covenant, the new covenant. We call it the testament. God is a covenant God. There's no way you can deal with God outside a covenant. You got, he's, he's, that, he's that kind of God. And this is what he tells the children of Israel. You have to keep the covenant in order to prosper. Your prosperity depends upon how you follow this covenant. Now, that's powerful. Whether you make it or not does not depend on the enemy out there. It doesn't depend on how long the journey is. Whether you make it or not depends upon how you obey this covenant. Wow. Wow. Chapter 4 of Deuteronomy. My God, listen to what he says in verse 5 and 6. See, I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do this in the land where you are entering to possess it. 
So keep and do them. This is what he says. For that is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. All you have to do is follow the covenant. And people are going to think you are super duper smart. They've never heard this type of wisdom before. It's what God is saying. And turn with me back to Exodus now, and this is one of the last one, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Exodus 19. Lord have mercy. I like this. Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Now then, this is at Mount Sinai, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then, then, under those conditions, you shall be my own possession among all the people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. This is what God told Moses to say to them. Obedience to the covenant was priority with God. Without obedience, nothing else meant anything. Amen. Nothing else meant, without obedience, nothing else meant anything. This is, this is something I believe um, we should stress today a little bit more in the 21st century church. It didn't have a value to it. Whatever you did outside of obedience, it didn't have a value to it. And this is what happened to Israel as they had got into the promised land and they started doing all the things that God asked them not to do, but they were still worshiping God. But it didn't have a value to it. Why? They were not obedient. Now, something God said in the book of Jeremiah is very, very interesting. In, in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 21 through verse 23, uh, let's, let's read that in Jeremiah chapter 7. Beautiful passage of Scripture here. I learned something here from Jeremiah chapter 7. This is my favorite prophetic book. And every time I read it, I, say, I have to read that again. I have to read that again. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 21 through verse 23. In verse 21, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offering and sacrifices. What I just read there in Mount Sinai, he said, but this is what I commanded them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and you will walk in all the way which I command you, that it may be well with you. God said, when you know when you came out of Egypt, Mount Sinai, I didn't command nothing about sacrifices and offering. I told you to do what? Obey my voice. That's what I commanded you to do, obey my voice. There were sacrifices in the wilderness. Now, you know that. They had to the sacrifice in the wilderness. But what God was saying is, I didn't put emphasis on sacrifices. The emphasis was on where? Obey my voice. Obey my voice. Now, that, 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 that obedient part is very, very important. Obey my voice, which means I put obedience over the sacrifices. In Jeremiah's day, what the people had come to was they were more interested in the ritual and the sacrifice. It reminds me of the church today. We are more interested in how it sounds and how it looks and how sophisticated it is. That means nothing without obedience. It means nothing. It means nothing. You may think you're pleasing God, but come on, come on. Look at the scripture there. It's, it's what, what God is saying. I didn't speak to you about offering and sacrifices. I never put that first. What I put first was obedience. Obey my voice. All of this was to be done 
when you worship me, you worship me by first bringing me your obedient self and then the sacrifice and the offering. You worship me by what? Being obedient first and then I could hear the music and enjoy the fellowship. When Amos came along, it was the same problem, and God told the prophet to go tell Israel to remove from me the noise of your music. I will not smell, that's a sacrifice, in your solemn assembly. You hear what God is saying? I don't want to hear that because you have been so disobedient to me, your music sounds like noise. <laughs> God is concerned about the first thing, what's the first thing? Obedience. So in verse 21 of Jeremiah, he says, the God of Israel, thus say the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your, to add burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat flesh. Now, <laughs> God is something. See, in offering sacrifices, you offered some to God and you kept some. You got me? You hear what God was saying? Your disobedience to me makes that null and void. He said, why don't you add your sacrifices to what you're going to give me, and you eat it all. <laughs> For the good it's going to do you, he said, add, what did God say? Add your burnt offerings to your sacrifice, and you eat it. It's not going to do you any good. How can you bring me anything? for me to accept, and you disobedient. I don't want it. You might as well eat it because it's not going to do you no good to give it to me. God is really saying something, see. They're going into the promised land. The land was to be conquered by obedience. You're going to conquer the land to every, everything. Every step of our journey, we're going to be successful in it if we obey God. The land was to be conquered by obedience. I know you're not warriors. You're a bunch of desert dwellers for the last 40 years. You don't know anything about war. As a matter of fact, you don't even have the equipment to protect yourself, but you will conquer the land because of the obedience to my covenant. God had told them, if you do everything I ask you to do, you will have to worry about nothing. I will protect you. I will feed you. I will give you their land as an inheritance. I've already made the promise. Many things God has in store for us, we have to walk by this word so we can possess what we've already inherited. The Lord wanted that land to be his land. And he told them, your future is based on your obedience to the covenant. Yes, yes, that's, that's what God wanted them to know. Everything that God has promised us should be received. Some things in this life, some in the life to come. There should be no lack. There should be nothing warning because God promised us that he will do what? He will be with us at all times. He'll supply a need. Of course, we have all these promises, all these promises. We come to church, we support, we give. Well, what is wrong? Are we obeying the voice of God? See, church is not to catch all for a blessing. Obedience is. Church, church, and, and, and doing church, that's not what God's looking at. We've already know what he says, I'm looking at the heart. So the Bible being the book of covenants, what did God say in his covenant? What did he say? What did he say in the covenant? Everything in the Old Covenant, the New Te Old Testament, we call it, everything in the New Covenant. God made those, and they are binding on us still today. Everything in the New Covenant, he has actually mediated through our high priest. Was it Aaron? Aaron in the dust. He couldn't continue by reasons of death. Aaron's been dead. But we have a high priest today. Hear me out. We have a high priest today, eternal in the heavens. And we have to read a little bit in the book of, 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 of uh, Hebrews to get this. Turn to Hebrews 7 and verse 23. 
We have a high priest. We have a high priest. Hebrews chapter 7. Man, oh man, oh man. This is what God says in Hebrews 7, 23. The former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. They couldn't continue. When they died, they had to get another one. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. That makes a lot of sense to me. Therefore, he is a also able to save forever. Save how long? Those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to do what? Make intercession. There's no way under heaven we can go any day without being under the protective care of God. The covenant will still be loud because the scripture tells us something about our high priest. The high priest. The high priest. Our high priest. When people who are on drugs, when they have gone back on them, they say they had a relapse. Uh, what happens when people have a spiritual relapse? What, what, what happens when we run with God and run with God and we follow what God says, then all of a sudden we have a what? A relapse. We fall back to the old place we used to be in. After we've had a little improvement made, we fall back. We have a relapse. See, we have to understand the work of our great high, pe high, great high priest. You have to understand what Jesus is saying here. You have to understand what his real ministry is. For we do not have a high priest. This is Hebrews 4. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. He's able to sympathize. When you're weak, he can sympathize with you. But one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. He knows what you're going through. There's no sense in running from him. You ought to run to him because he knows what you go through. And he has been successful in it because... He didn't succumb to it. So you have somebody who cares, who feels exactly what you feel. But oftentimes we've been in positions of nobody don't know how I feel. Your high priest knows. Your high priest knows. He, he knows. He faced all the things we face, yet he did not sin. So faith in Christ Jesus is the final revelation you're going to have from God. I'm getting ready to move on from here. There's no greater revelation than Jesus. If you can't hear Jesus, if he can't help you, oh man. Mm. There's nothing beyond him. There's nothing God can do. There's nothing God can do if Jesus can't do it. And now well, if you turn him down, that's it. So the main theme that I've been just speaking about in the Bible is obedience to God. Obedience. Obedience. Let's find out what it is. You got a few minutes? The Bible says, children, obey your parents. That must have been them back there. <laughs> Servants, obey your masters. Saints, he said, obey the truth. That's what God said. In Acts 5, 29, this is what Peter says, and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man. Makes sense to me. The unclean spirit obeyed Jesus. The winds, the sea, they obeyed his voice. In Daniel 9, 11, here's what Daniel prayed to God. He said, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice, so the curse has been poured out on us. Along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. You hear what he's saying? You know why we haven't prospered? You know why this curse is on us? We have not obeyed the voice of God. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm in this day now. Do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey its lust. Now, he's saying something. Do not let sin reign. To reign means to be king. To reign means you have 
the, the, the higher power. Don't let sin have the higher power in your life so that you obey it in its lust. Well, what is he talking about now? Obey. Obey this covenant. Obey the Lord. Obey. It's a compound word, hupo akuo. The word literally means to hear under, to hear akuo, where we get our word acoustics from in English, to hear under. You cannot really hear God until you under his authority. <laughs> now listen to what I'm saying. Uh, you really don't hear until you where? Yeah. You can listen in an environment like this, but are you really hearing? Jesus said, be careful what you hear. You probably understand my words because we speak English. You understand English. You understand what I'm saying. You've heard the word obey, and you could put it fairly well together, but are you hearing God? There are many instances that God uses this word. It literally means to listen to something in order to pay attention to. There's nothing else blocking your understanding. There's nothing else on your mind but who's talking right now. That's God. I don't have nothing else to think about but what I'm hearing right now. And what he's saying is God say I need to be obedient to him. That should get our attention because of the promises God made. To listen to something in order to give it attention. Do I have your undivided attention? We obey based on position. It all depends on where you are, whether you obey or not. Just some, some, some people talk and I don't have to obey them. You know the little grandkids. <laughs> My position is not under them. It's over them. But as a kind man, I heed their advice sometimes. Sometimes I don't listen. That's my position. When God speaks, he wants us to take a subordinate role. When you come before the word of God, you take a what kind of role? A subordinate role. All of my attention and understanding goes toward what God is saying. Let's, let's, listen to me. I want to hear what God is saying, so I am the subordinate. When I sit at my desk, I'm the subordinate. I come in here to hear. I come in here to listen. I come in here to get instructions, not to give them. Listen at what God is telling us. To hear under authority is what changes things. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 14, God spoke to the serpent. In chapter 16, he spoke to Eve. In chapter 17, he spoke to Adam. The serpent, the man, and the woman. What was Adam seeing? Listen very carefully to what God told Adam right there in verse 17. He says, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you subordinated yourself under her and stood in me. <laughs> She spoke and you listened. You place yourself, turn to Genesis 3, 17. His sin was he didn't subordinate himself to God. He subordinated himself to a law order of authority. He should have never, never subordinated himself to Eve. You, you, you read what it says? You read what it says? He says he subordinated himself. Look, look at Genesis 3.17. Somebody have it? Read, read it. Read, read it for me, D. Witt. You have it there? I see you got your sophisticated artillery there. <laughs> you have it on there? 
Okay, hold on. Leslie got it. Read it, Leslie. Read it. Because you have heeded to the voice. Because you did what? You, you, you subordinated yourself. You listened with attention and understanding, and you did just what she asked you to do. You shifted what I created. I put man under me. You put me under the woman. When God speaks, there's no higher authority. Don't shift yourself. Don't move yourself. When God speaks, don't change your position. You stay under God's authority. He says this here. He subordinated himself. He did what now? He subordinated himself. He placed the woman over God. And God said, because you've done that. Because you've done that. I meant nothing when Eve was talking. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? You, 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 look, look at you. You listened to him, and you did what I say don't do. What did God say? I'm talking about God. Now, read God's part. Cursed is the ground because you subordinated yourself under the wrong authority. He said, what now? Earth. Is the ground. You read good, Leslie. <laughs> read on. For your sake. For your sake. In toil you shall eat of it. Mm -mm. And all the days of your life. All the days of your life. No there you go. They're out there right now. <laughs> out there right now. You, you, you see, obedience is the first point in worship. That's the first point. If you did not come in here to obey God, everything else is useless. It's, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. It's useless. If obedience, this is what God was telling the children of Israel, listen, I didn't talk to you about ritual. I say obey my voice. I put that first. So Subordinate yourself before you do anything for me. I want nothing unless you obey me. You can't sing nothing. You can't give me nothing without first obeying me. That's, 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 that's what God is saying. That's what God is really saying here. That's why you make progress by obedience. What has slowed you down, what has held you back, I don't care what it was, you obey the word of God, you will make progress from that thing. If you quit subordinating yourself under other things and other voices, you will find out that God will elevate you. God will bring you out. Deuteronomy 29, 9, so keep the words of this covenant that you may prosper in all that you do. So keep the words of this covenant. Obey my voice that you may prosper in all that you do. The word there in Genesis is Shema, which is in Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's the Shema. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That's what he's saying. What God wants is, I want me above everything. I want me above what now? Everything. Above your sacrifice, above your, your, your worship. I want me above that. If you're going to worship, you worship from your heart of obedience to me. I'm above all that stuff they do in churches. I'm above that. If people will come, they will sing, they will have a wonderful service and walk out just as disobedient as they came in. God says, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 1, <laughs> It looks like he reversed course, but he didn't reverse course. In Genesis chapter 1, he told Abraham to listen to Sarah. Hmm. You listen to her. Genesis 21, 12. You listen to Sarah. It's a different situation here. You have it? Genesis 21, 12. This is a different situation. In Genesis chapter 21 and verse 12, he tells Abraham, but God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid, 
Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her. You know why? Because you've got my will confused. You, 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 you want what I said. It's not a part of the promise. You want Ishmael. Oh, no. And Isaac. And Isaac, the promise is going to come. And, and, and she's going to have Isaac. Ishmael is not the one. She said, get rid of him. Listen to her. <laughs> listen, listen. The promise is with Isaac. Ain't even born yet. The promise is with Isaac. You are full of emotions. And emotionally, you want to hold on to something you bought forth. But God said, let it go. What did God say? Let it go. Sometimes we have to listen to reason rather than our feelings and our emotions. Sometimes we have to hear what God is really, really saying. If he promised me a blessing, then I should listen to reason that tries to tell me you're not going to get it disobeying God. Now that's the voice you should listen to, the voice of reason. So without obedience, the whole point of worship is lost. It's totally lost. Anything we do ritually without obedience is lost. He speaks a little bit about when the people had challenged Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said, hey, listen, this is, uh, this is not something that God wants. And when he got through speaking, you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to get rid of him. They felt threatened by what he said. And then the scripture says the time will come when men will not endure what? Sound doctrine. So to possess the land that God had given them was totally dependent on how they followed the voice of God, how they obeyed him as they went through the land. You're going to conquer according to the covenant. You're going to be blessed. The land will produce according to the covenant. Everything was based on what? The covenant. So as we walk with God, we have to understand that it's the obedience to God that he wants us to have that's really going to cause things to happen. I want to, to uh, make a point here, and then we're going to pray. I want to pray that you understand God is interested in your subordinating yourself to him out of obedience than anything else. You listen to him than anything else. This is what makes everything works. This is what makes it all come together. You listen to him. He is the voice you want to hear. So in Joshua 1, he tells Joshua, verse 10, that you are going to go in and possess the land. Possess it. And you're not going to go in and all this stuff going to happen and that's going to happen. You go in to do what? You possess the land. You're going to obtain it by possessing it. Why? Because you've already inherited through the promise I made to Abraham. You just go in and possess your inheritance. As we come to the, to the close of this year, to the opening of another year, there are many promises God has made us. And he wants us to possess what he said we've already inherited. It would be a shame for me to have an inheritance uh, downtown somewhere that could really change my life, and I don't know it's there. Once I know it's inherited, it's my inheritance, then I need to go do what? Possess it. That's exactly right. What obedience will do was allow you to go in and possess your inheritance. You will have what God say you can have. You will be who God say you could be. All God asks you to do is what? Obey my voice. That's all. If there's any warrant to go on, you say, I'll, I'll be the warrior. They call him the Lord of hosts. What? The host. He's a, he's a warrior. I know how to war. I know how to stop things. I know how to begin things. I control the wind. I control the water. All I ask you to do is what? Obey my voice. And that should be where our whole attention should lie is in obeying the voice of God. Are, are, are you with me here? 
The present cannot be fully enjoyed if we don't obey the voice of God. The future is not as bright if we don't obey the voice of God. But all of these things begin to take on a whole new meaning. You can look for them in the expectation. You can do what you thought you couldn't do. Why? You obey the voice of God. How do I do that? When God speaks, you submit. It's just like that. Let their soul be subject to the higher power. This is what the scriptures say. When God speaks, everybody else becomes secondary. It's the voice of God that I want to hear. And when I hear that voice, I obey that voice. Then God says what? You will gain what you have inherited. Are, are you with me here? Now, I, I want to just bring this one thing to your attention. In the end of the, the book of Deuteronomy, the last thing God tells Israel about how to put an end to debt. Wow. He knew they would get in the land. He knew some things were going to happen. So he wrote, told Moses to write this and teach it to him. Here's how you handle debt. Debt. That's a, that's a strong word today. That's a strong. I'm, I'm just writing some things down, and this would be a whole message in some. Debt was to have an end. It never was supposed to wrap people up year after year after year after year after year. It was to have an end. And this is what he, the last thing God spoke to, to, uh, to Moses that, that Joshua was supposed to tell the people, you put an end to debt because debt puts people in bondage and I bought them out of bondage. I don't want them to be in bondage. Don't go beyond seven years. Don't go beyond seven. Don't hold nobody beyond seven years. It's what God say. At the end of the seventh year, that seven year Shemitah cycle that we call the tithing cycle, at the end of the seventh year, you release them. People cannot keep taking away from the future to have a successful life. And God understood that. Seven years, stop it. Release them. Seven years. Well, for some strange reason, we forgot that. Everything that will keep you from being who God wants you to be, it should have a limit to it should stop. Nothing should hold on to you year after year after year after year after year. Something's wrong with that. So what God is letting us know, obey my voice. He said, you do what now? Obey my voice and I will do that. And this is what should motivate us to do what God wants us to do. Now this was the thing that God said, you out of Egypt, you out of bondage, you stay out of bondage. You're here in the land to enjoy it, not to be bought into slavery by it. Now, this was very, very important to God. The covenant that God gave was to produce a society of people that was solely bound by the word of God. That covenant, when it was followed, supposed to produce a nation that was under the law of God, the rule of God, and understood what God wanted. And every man that was in covenant with God was supposed to practice what God had said. And the land was supposed to be a place <coughs> that all the nations looked to. And they say, surely those are some wise people over there. And everybody was to see how God treated his people, and they were to come and join in. Are oh, you listening to me? When we look at ourselves today and we wonder, see, how is God treating them? It doesn't look like God taking care of them. I know I told a brother one day, uh, this was a while back, and uh, I said, man, your God don't look like he take care of you. You need to get another God. If this is the best my God can do, I need another one. I don't need a God to keep me down, to keep me depressed. I, I need somebody to pick me up, to help me out of my misery. I need a God who cares about me, is what I need. I want to tell you something, and you have that God. Would you obey him? And all these blessings shall overtake you. 
our producer society people that the world long to see. And you know what? I'll start right here among you. Yeah. I'll produce it. I'll bring it to pass. Yeah. Now, well, maybe I don't see that right now, but listen to me. It's not impossible with God. You may progress through what now? Obedience. What is obedience? When you subordinate yourself under God's word and you carry out exactly what God said. I want to pray. I want to pray for the whole church. I want everybody to stand, grab hold with your neighbor. We're going to pray that we would obey God, that we subordinate ourselves, that we won't be like Adam and listen to words that God didn't speak and do things that God didn't say. Father, I thank you. Now, we, we're getting ready to go into a new year. I know we have next Sunday, but I wanted to do this today. And we're making a covenant with God. God, God being who he is, you have to have a covenant with him. And Jesus came to ratify the new covenant. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. It's not just communion. It's to remind us of something, that you're under covenant with God. You can't say what you want to say. You can't do what you want to do. You're under covenant with God. You have to do what God say, and you have to say what God say. You're under covenant. It's not about you now. It's about the covenant. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for many for the mission of sins. You are entering into a covenant with me that you will listen to me, obey me, follow me. You're in a covenant. And I'll be your God and you'll be my people. I will bless you going in and bless you coming out. I will defeat the enemy for you. Listen to what God is saying here. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to the end, the last days of this year, we stand before you, not because of any other reason than we know you're with us. And we know you love us. And you've asked us to obey your voice. And we enter into that covenant with you that we will be obedient to your voice, that we will hear you, Lord God, and that we will respond to you. And our worship, our singing, and our praise will all be followed by obedience. And I thank you for it today. And you will show yourself strong. And you will show yourself as our God. You will bless us and you will keep us. You will raise us up out of the dust, those that have fallen down. And I praise your name for it, Lord God. You will keep the enemy off our back, oh God. We will not be depressed, oh Lord God. We will not be cast down. We will always hold our heads up. We will always be full of rejoicing. In the name of Jesus, Lord. You promised us you will never leave us. You promised us you'll never forsake us. And we take you at your word, Lord God. We are your people. We are your people. And nothing that you've promised us will fall to the ground. This would be one of the most blessed years that we entered into. A year of favor, a year of release, oh Lord God, a year of spiritual maturity development, a year, oh Lord God, that we have never seen before, a year that would make you real to us more than at any time in our lives. You will show yourself strong in our midst. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. 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 God took, you, you may have your seats. Uh, God took a man by the name of Nicodemus and had him to cross Jesus' path one night. And they had this discussion. Nicodemus tells Jesus, allow me to paraphrase, nobody could teach like you. I know God's with you. Jesus' response, it takes more than good teaching. It takes more than good teaching, Nicodemus. 
no marvel that I'm talking to you. Nicodemus was a very important man. He was one of the 70 on the Sanhedrin or the council. He was a ruler. He was a scholar. He taught people. Watch what Jesus says. Don't marvel at this. You must be born again. You can't see the kingdom unless you've been born again. Nicodemus didn't understand him. He really didn't. How can I, how can I do that? Now I start asking a question at that point. What baby do you know of has anything to do with his birth? Whoever had a baby, then you women had a baby that had anything to do with his birth? Everybody had to do everything for him. He had nothing to do at 